And now, from the Marquee Media Studio inside Mark Tank, it's the Mark Haney Show. Yes, this is the Mark Haney Show, and we are on a mission to ignite the entrepreneurial revolution right here in the hometown we love. And we are doing that by building the Backyard Advantage, the most connected community in the world for local entrepreneurs. But today, we are doing something different, very, very special, very, very excited. We're bringing in a studio audience, and we're going to be talking mindset, fitness, In building a community, we're going to be having the owner of Eastwind Yoga, Scott Emmerich, in the house, along with Jessica Wink, who owns Wink's Fitness. And as well, we'll have Blair Morrison, the owner of Anywhere Fitness. He is a CrossFit guy, and we're going to be letting them help explain to us about fitness. And it's going to be fun and some good interaction from the studio audience. So uh, stick around. Okay, this is, I am so fired up about this show. I have been um, doing the show for, I don't know, seven years, eight years, and today we're gonna do something way, way different. We're going to be talking to fitness entrepreneurs, fitness experts, and we're gonna be talking about why fitness is important, how to get fit, and the different approaches. And so today we have people that are really well known in the region. We have Scott Emmerich, He's the owner of East Wind Yoga. We also have Jessica Winkelhausen. Everybody calls you Jessica Wink though, don't they? Yeah, you own uh, Wink's Fitness and Wellness, among other things. And then Blair Morrison, the owner of Anywhere Fitness. And it's a lot of CrossFit in there. So we're gonna be talking about the different approaches to getting fit. Also wanna talk a little bit about the mindset uh, that comes along with being committed to fitness. So maybe to start off with, I'll just go around the horn here, start with you, Scott. Maybe just a little bit of your background and uh, maybe you're the yoga guy, so how is yoga a little different than maybe some of the other approaches to fitness? Well, I've only been to a couple CrossFit, CrossFit classes and only a couple general fit classes, so I can't say that I'm an expert to the others. I just fell in love <clears throat> from my first class in 2002 for yoga and I opened my studio two year, literally almost two years to the day later. And for me, yoga has sh- simply been the fighting good stress with bad stress and a way of just feeling great and doing great. And the community that we've created over the last 19 years since Roseville opened has just been phenomenal. And it's, it's so interweaving into my life on so many different ways. I'm such a fan of the people i'm such a fan of the practice and it's been a journey for me since 2000 and march 23rd of 2002. okay blair let's go to you um all right so i i mean i was a college athlete i played football uh at my university in princeton and i feel like the reason i chose crossfit i was always lifting weights that was always a big part of my life and my training and um what drew me to crossfit specifically um, was that it was so varied. There's so many different avenues that you could pursue to get better. There's, you know, if you do it correctly, my interpretation of what it should be is there's nothing that's out, out of bounds. Like you could do five minutes of a downward dog hold and that could be part of a CrossFit workout. You know, the idea is that it's not one thing, it's all things combined. Um, and the struggle has been over the, the last 12 years that I've been running the business of CrossFit is to try to like maintain that spirit right, to like uh, continue to be varied, not get kind of channeled into one way or another. Um, but, you know, to Scott's point about the community, that is another piece that I think has been really, really great. Um, and I think it's a lot like a yoga studio in that sense is the people are really bonded together through what they do. Okay, so I need to um, take a second to recognize our studio audience as well. I forgot to do that at the beginning. Um, but if you, so I, behind uh, me, behind Jessica actually, uh, there is a studio audience. There's people from East Wind Yoga, from Anywhere Fit, from Jessica Wink's uh, Fitness. Um, maybe just like a show of applause. Uh, if you're from yoga, give me a little, uh, okay. Oh, pretty. If you're from uh, CrossFit, uh, how? 
Oh, it's a little lighter. Let's talk about that community a little bit, Blair. Uh, okay, so oh, if you're from Wigs Fitness, how about a little They're tired. Wigs oh. Fitness? Okay, so, uh, you know, this is a podcast and radio show, but, you know, we also do it on YouTube, and so the studio audience, um, I think, is going to add a little bit of a, a change of pace for us. But, Jessica, why don't you um, maybe give us a little bit of an overview of what you're doing over at Wings? Yeah, so I've been in uh, Placer County for about 15 years now. Um, started my own company uh, in my own building about probably 12, 13 years ago. And my background is gymnastics, so I competed at the state level and um, trained with Bella Caroli. And, you know, so I, I started building muscle at a really young age. And then um, I got into weight training because I had gone through a period in my life after losing my mom suddenly where. I was struggling a little bit with depression and it was like the one thing that made me feel just normal in my skin again and it was one thing that I could control like it, it required me to show up and so I just always chased it after that like I didn't get that same kind of um, breakthrough mentally or spiritually by running or doing any of those things but it was kind of like Blair said it was like combining it but it was really like my main focus is on the weight training and so back before social media really played into business or growing our um, platforms i competed and i ended up chasing that and going pro in the industry and i feel like that's back when that was like og like you had to train and be disciplined to win where like now it's 40 percent is your markability it's like what your stage presence is which to me doesn't there's a lot of hard work that goes into whether you know how to walk in heels on a stage. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that I did um, do that when I did. I've built a great community in Roseville, but really have clients that come from all over. And the same thing to what both of you guys said, it's just such an awesome community. I mean, all of my other businesses have come from the relationships within Winx Fitness. Yeah. And it makes me wonder a little bit about why other people love fitness so much it's catching on obviously in a big way i went this morning and got tortured from scott hot with scott uh in yoga this morning and then we went over to blair's place and sam uh, tortured me a little bit more and i do it i think predominantly because i like the idea of how i feel after i've been through a little bit of uh, discomfort i like that feeling after why do people like yoga i mean we all do these things for a different reason maybe we kind of go around and just kind of why do people do it well there's not many activities out there that lengthen you at the same time they strengthen you. So from a balance standpoint, we don't live in balance in our body. Even as simple as you think of the gas pedal is always on the right side or your wallet is always on one side. If you were a mother and you carried your kid, you oftentimes carried your kid on one hip or your purse on one shoulder. So we don't live, we write with one, usually one hand, not the other. Mouse are on the right side. So we don't live in our life in balance. So we need to do something that brings us back to center, back to our balance. And yoga is a center out activity, whether it's center to the earth or center to the sky or center to the extremities or to the, to the limits of our mobility. And the balance of that, of being strong and flexible, it's a unique thing. And it ju you just feel great doing it. And I remember your journey began during the pandemic when other things weren't available to you. And now here you are, pretty much a five day a week. Yeah, Rockland CrossFit closed for a week and I joined yoga yeah. and I was like, oh, I, I like this. Well, the thing is, I think this is one of the myths about, well, I shouldn't even call it a myth because I didn't realize yoga was that hard, right? It is a very strenuous, workout in addition to length and strength and getting balanced it's harder than crap well do most people see it that way so like any activity and probably any one of these modalities there's variations of what kind of that practice is in in my class it's not you know there's the yoga these days the western yoga they call it has gone very you know fast fast music and a lot of high energy and even really hot rooms we love the heat, not as hot as a lot of other studios, but for East Wind, it's about staying in the path of center out, center down, center up, not having to move very fast, but to think about this. If you were to take a very cold piece of Play-Doh 
and just start pressing against it, it would resist, it'd be hard. But if you just soften it in your hand and just let the warmth of your hand kind of embrace it and, and sink into it, it would soften pretty easily and pretty quickly. If you understand that concept, that's what yoga is, the way that I teach it, and the way that a lot of the teachers at my studio teach it. And it's, again, it's strengthening, grounding, opening, lengthening, all at the same time in the same practice. That well, kind of balance is hard to find. Yeah, one of the things I see different, Blair, about CrossFit that I saw versus going over to CalFit and working out or some other gym and working out, is the competitive aspect. It's a fun, Scott's back there and he brings on a little bit of a competitive personality, but that's ingrained in the CrossFit culture, which is not in yoga. It's almost like the you know the opposite of yoga when you walk into CrossFit because you wanna compete, but they, they steer you away from that yoga. Right, yeah, but I always, <laughs> I always tell people you can't win yoga. <laughs> right, like you just stop trying to like be more flexible than everybody. It's not about that, right? I True. Mean, yeah. You get people in in a yoga studio that are. My wife is a great example. She is a former level ten gymnast, like professional uh, dancer for many years with the Kings, and she's super flexible. At least she used to be. And she goes to a yoga class and she hurts herself because she thinks she's trying to like measure up to, to something, right? And that's, she's got a competitive mindset yeah, still and she takes yeah. it into yoga. And I think I think that's dangerous no matter what you're doing, no matter what modality is. You need to know what you're capable of and make it about you, not about everybody else. But to your point, I do think there is an attractiveness to people that do CrossFit in that competitive nature. Like we do time the workouts. Like you're trying to finish certain things fast as fast as you can. So there's there's a, a sense of winning, right? Or that you did better than you did before. Um, or, you know, if, if it's a strength day and you're trying to lift a certain amount of weight, you know what you lifted three weeks ago when we did that lift. And so there's, there's a way to kind of measure yourself and, and seek progress. And I think um, most people like that, you know, they like being affirmed that their hard work is paying off. And even though in the grand scheme of things, how fast they do that does not matter one bit. The thing that matters is that they're there, that they're there being active, creating lots of full range of motion shapes with their body and like banding together with other people. That's the part that's important. Absolutely. That's the part that makes them better overall as a person physically and mentally. Um, but I think you're right about that. There's a lot of people out there that miss having a little competition in their life, right? That it's okay to come in and talk a little like Scott always does, and, you know, it's fun. It gets We're gonna have going. to delete the S word for uh, FM radio. There's a FCC <laughs> podcast, we can get away with it. Yeah. Takes Blair to Sorry. break a rule here and there. Talk. Entrepreneurs breaking rules. Talk a little ish. <laughs> <laughs> but there's misconceptions, I think, too, in CrossFit that um, I think some people are intimidated by mm -hmm. it at some level, but it, 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 your CrossFit uh, programming you've actually got two choices. You can go with the one that seems a little more competitive, or you can go to the one that looks just as hard to me, but apparently yeah. it's not as competitive. Yeah. And so people choose one or the other. You sort of break it down for the different uh, personalities. Yeah, so we traditionally the way CrossFit would be run is that you'd have like a, an on-ramp for a new person to come in outside of class, like on a, on a weekend or a set class time. So as a beginner, you'd never walk in and go straight to whatever the main workout of the day was. And during- Chest of bars today. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then, during, honestly, it was during COVID, we just, we, we didn't have the ability to, f um, to kind of funnel people to specific times because we were only open for like 30 minutes per class. It was just really, really difficult. So we ended up just making two workouts every single hour, every single day, so that if you were a beginner off without doing any CrossFit experience, any weightlifting, we could come in and you'd have something that's a, a low skill, accessible workout that's basically body weight cardio that was easy for us to coach and not putting anybody at risk. And then the other one that you're talking about is a little more advanced. It combines more traditional CrossFit stuff like gymnastics and weightlifting and things like that. So people get the choice. And sometimes, I mean, you're a good example, you choose the, the more beginner workout often 
Oh, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> and that's cool. That's okay. I've chosen it one time. <laughs> uh, it's because maybe you came from a hot yoga uh, class that morning a little bit. Where? I out. see how it is. He spends, okay. a, he spends a lot of <laughs> time right. in Shavasana. I need the hecklers to start jumping in <laughs> or at some point here. Okay, Jessica, why do we... So I haven't been to your workouts, um, but I have driven up and down Vernon Street in Roseville and seen... I think people running up and down the street and um, it looks hard. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the attraction to Winks? You know, I'm like super traditional in what I do. I believe in old school just lifting weights. And um, it's, I always laugh because with social media being such a big part of the platform, like I'm not that exciting to watch on social media um, because we're coming in week over week. Yes, I'm pairing things differently and we're going heavier with the weights and Honestly, like I really like to tap in spiritually and kind of feel how my clients are and what their needs are. So if I feel heaviness in the room, then I feel like I will redirect the workout in a sense where I know about at 28 minutes with my clients, about 28 to 30 minutes, the endorphins are finally like kicking in and they're starting to like there's some pep in the step. But I can tell like during COVID, for example, when there was just a lot going on and they weren't getting outside enough that we would take those weight training and then I would also put some like hit cardio in there and get them outside. And so I really feel like for me, honestly, I don't map out the workouts when I go in there. I kind of wait until I show up. I know the muscle group I'm gonna be in, but I really do like try to see where everyone's at and kind of read the room before. So I'm known to switch things up or like if they're just not quite there, I can tell they're in their checklist because my core audience is women and so you know they're in doing all the things thinking about rushing off to get the kids and the to-do list where i'm like hey when you walk in here i want you to bookshelf all that stuff like this is one hour for you i want you to leave better than you came i want the heaviness to go and so i'll speak to what i feel like they're carrying one one time uh, i was at yoga it was a couple years ago one of the instructors who's not there anymore was talking about why she started yoga and you know kind of asking the uh, the uh, the students why did you start yoga and she said she started yoga because she wanted to get a yoga butt and I was like oh <laughs> Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Um, you got pants for that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, <laughs> why? Okay, so there's all these reasons we want to work out. How much of it is, uh, you know, physique versus um, overall health, mm. um, stress mitigation? I mean, what are the different reasons why people are there? And is, you know, is there a one part of it that people lean toward or are more attracted to? Yeah, it's interesting. I would say like in the last five years, my business shifted to more of a lifestyle client. Um, but before that, it was really in the competitive world. I mean, I was hosting all the major shows here. I was partnered with um, the CFO and CEO out of Canada. I was, you know, it was huge worldwide and COVID obviously shifted stuff. So mm -hmm. I was taking girls all over the United States and even out of the United States for shows. So that was kind of like my core demographics where now, as I'm getting older, I want people that are committed to the lifestyle of feeling stronger, but also I do feel like there are a lot of people working through some major life you know, situations, whether it's relational or whatever's going on, and it's one place that it's a consistent. When you show up, that's all you have to do, I tell my clients, all you have to do is show up, and then the rest is for me to like guide them through that. And um, you know, I've got clients that have been with me for over a decade, so they kind of know, I prefer this kind of client because they know that it's not just the physical. People come to me right now, we're working on our Daisy Dukes for summertime. That's kind of like the fun thing. We're squatting a lot, we're deadlifting a lot. Okay, explain the Daisy Dukes to me. Seriously? Everyone's, Come on. <laughs> everyone's for our really, audience, it's for the studio audience. Yeah, right. well I mean, I think, I don't know if it's because we're getting older, but women, like mid 30s, 40s, 50s, I have um, clients in their 70s, but we feel like we're losing our you know, our form and our legs and on our butts getting a little bit saggier. And so the way that we combat that is to do, you know, heavy lift in our legs, uh, specifically through deadlifts and, and squatting. And so the joke is, is that we're gonna go to a concert this summer, a country concert, and everyone will wear their Daisy Dukes. And so I have this like cute little older lady, and, she, and this is the cool thing about weight training. She's probably been with me for six months now. 
and she's lonely so she found her way into me and I think she just needed community honestly like does it feel good that she's getting biceps and triceps and her core is coming in at 73 absolutely but when she gets teary eyed when she leaves like I always go around the room and check in on everyone she's like it's just nice to have a place to be like to be known you know and I feel like that's what we do when we build something that we build that I didn't know that at first to be honest I wanted to have a nice body and that's what I did my 20s and 30s were all about my physique and then as I got older I'm like as hard as I work out in the gym it's still going to change I obviously want to look good but I want to feel good and in the competitive world that I lived in everyone was so shallow like I hated going to competitions like it wasn't fun they weren't nice and pretty much everyone's heavily supplemented So like in my world, it's like they might have a nice butt and biceps, but their faces were sunken. And I'm like, I do not want to look like that. And so for me, it was staying true to who my values were, like what I was willing to give up or to do in order to get into my best shape. And that was really the time investment for me and the food I put in my mouth. Yeah. Today at CrossFit, Sam, I don't think this had ever happened before. She she pulled us off to the side at the beginning and she said, why are you here? Right, what's the reason you go to CrossFit? And so we went around, excuse me, I think Scott said he wanted to have a nice butt, if I remember right. Um, I said longevity, right? Old guy wants to make sure he, you know, has a few extra years. But why is it that people go to CrossFit? Is there like a certain thing, the competition, but what are they, what's the end result that they're looking for? Well, I mean, I think there is some vanity in everybody, no matter what their motivations are. People want to look a certain way that matches their their personal identity, right? The way they feel they, everybody has their own like avatar, right? So to speak. So part of it is that people want a a methodology that produces the results they they want. Um, I think I think what CrossFit does probably better than anything else is it compresses the activity of fitness into a very short, intense window. And I think that draws a lot of people to it where they know that um, the most efficient way to lose body fat is to spend two plus hours a day at low intensity cardio because you're only gonna burn fat at that heart rate. Mm. But not many people have two plus hours a day to do that, right? So they, they look for something that's a little bit kind of shorter window. Um, And I think CrossFit cut its teeth on making the workouts really hard. So back in the day, this came out of like the military and they were pressed for time. They're just like, how do we like kill ourselves in 15 minutes or less? And like, oh, well, there's this thing called CrossFit. That really works for that. The problem is if that's all you do, right, you're gonna, you're not gonna end up with the results that you want. The, your adrenals go to go to crap. This is Blair again. Um, you, uh, you don't notice the other two find, use any foul language. Know, He's got little just, kids too. These guys are so polished, <laughs> can I say. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you, you beat yourself up. And, and I mean, Jessica knows this too. In the bodybuilding world, if you, if you hammer the same joint over and over and over again, you're gonna get tendonitis, you're gonna get tears. Mm-hmm. So I think what draws people to CrossFit has to be tempered. Right, the high intensity stuff is exhilarating. It's it's fun. It's competitive, like you said, um, and I think that's what draws people in. Uh, but if that's all they did, if they didn't have a, a, a well rounded approach to it, like all the variation I was talking about, I think they'd burn out. Um, so I think what keeps them there is a little bit different than what draws them there. And I think what keeps them there is the variation if it's properly programmed. And I think it's the it's the people, right? The friends you make, the Scots, the Sams, the the Marks. Um, and I think that's. People that share the suffering tend to like each other, mm-hmm. you know, and, and CrossFit. Well, that's the truth. CrossFitters yeah. suffer. They suffer pretty hard, so. Pathways to, I mean, being happy. So there, there's something I think the people in the back here, they know that when you're feeling in shape, when you're working out and you're feeling good, <clears throat> you're a happier person, you're a better entrepreneur, you're a better family person, you're just happier. And I feel like yoga brings that out. And one of the things about yoga that's different, I don't know if it's different than um, Winx, but it's definitely different than CrossFit, is you get a, at least in Scott's class, you get a steady diet of philosophy throughout the class, because there's these down times when you're just holding a pose, and so then it's, but you get Scott in your ear um, 
reminding you of why you're there or prompting some of those thoughts. Um, did, can you elaborate on why you do that and what is it, you know? Well, what do you the, to the word yoga has many parts and asana, they will tell you, is the least of the important parts. It's the other modalities of yoga that was really, asana was created just to prepare the body to sit in stillness okay, and meditate. Okay, what is asana means asana be still? Asana means posture. Oh, posture. Yeah, so yoga postures, where we're so driven right now with performing postures and that we're, that we're caught up in the physical nature of it, and that's just kind of the Western way, and there's nothing wrong with that. Also, the bodies of today were, are so different and how we live in our bodies today, the habits of human beings today, compared to 5,000 years ago when asana or yoga was generally created, it makes sense that we're doing a lot of physical because we also have a lot of sedentary time. So to do the physical, it's important. It's important to challenge the muscle. It's important to move the body in, in, in regular ways and counter ways. The intensity of yoga is so different in so many other activities. I just, there's so much movement in yoga. There's so much stillness and that's a different intensity. To be, to have your heart pumping, to have your body sweating, to be at your physical edge and not moving, that's just a different thing for people to wrap their head around. So it's a different experience. The end of it is, it is, you know, who doesn't love to feel great and who doesn't love to do something they either have never done before or haven't done in 20 years, 25 years, when they were pliable and, and malleable and all these things that have changed. So it really is about feeling great and doing things and, and, and keep, we're explorers by nature. Yeah. Human beings are explorers by nature. So we wanna do that next thing. So that we wanna honor that and also there's a core truth in all of us that if we go by sit by the river and just meditate on what is my truth we know when we're in our ego and there's nothing wrong we'd be dead without our ego so to honor the ego but not become egoic in our practice that's our constant work yeah. so there's a lot of parts to how do we bring ourselves back to yeah do the physical it's fighting bad stress with good stress and realize you are none of it you as a divine being outside of your physical body is none of it. One of the things you mentioned was kind of this discovery process, this where you discover, you have a little progress and it's like a breakthrough moment. And those, those don't happen every day, but when you get it, it, it feels, you know, it feels amazing. So I've really enjoyed that process in both CrossFit and yoga. But I think in yoga more recently, because I'm newer to it, um, it really has made me want to discover more. So I've, I've got this new mantra that I've been using for since I started yoga. Every muscle, every joint, every day. Because we have so many joints. What do we got? Hundreds of joints, uh, hundreds of muscles, a couple hundred bones. Is there a part of the body that we neglect, that you notice in, in yoga? It's like, boy, these guys never, I mean, just our population, doesn't use this. Well, it's your brain. Yeah. Ah. yeah I was just yeah. gonna say, I was just gonna say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Blair. Yeah. You use your brain, Mark, I'm just saying it. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. not always. <laughs> what body do you have? Because we all have different core bodies. Some bodies are more dense, some bodies are softer, some bodies uh, retain fat differently than others. What body do you have and what life do you live? So if you lived on a farm where you're gonna have to lift a lot of things and do a lot of things, I can totally see how you would be more aligned with doing more power work. Yeah. If you do a lot of sitting, you're at a desk, hamstrings, glutes, all that stuff need to be released, need to be opened. So a lot of forward folds, downward dogs, those kind of words, warriors, triangle poses and stuff like that. What body do you have and what life do you live? And that should dictate really the counter work. What, what do you do every day and how do those muscles work? If we, let's say for example, walk, and we just get on a, on a bike path and we just walk 10 miles a day. Well, your body is very linear in its walk and your feet are very flat. Now, what other angles are needed? The external rotation, the internal rotation. Most people stand with their feet turned out. Just naturally come in here and stand with their feet turned out. Now turn them to parallel and have them spin their knees apart and activate the inner legs. It's a totally different experience. 
Well, it's so, interesting because technology has made it so we don't feel yeah. like we need to walk, so that we, you know, we we do things a lot differently because of societal change. Did we? I don't know. Five hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, did we stand with our feet sticking out, or is that something that it was doesn't caused matter? By because five thousand years ago, they did everything on their feet. They didn't have a, an inch of cushion and heel lift and arch support. So you wearing minimalist shoes, right? Yeah, you see minimalist shoes. Yeah, I love it. So they they nowadays we're we're stepping out of using our body in the shoes that we wear, for example, and we need to step back into our body and take the shoes off and walk in the sand and walk in the dirt and climb a mountain with minimalist shoes or minimal protection of your feet and let your body go back to work and do what it's meant to do. Okay, besides feet, okay, so you're obviously a foot guy too, uh, mm -hmm. Blair. Are there things that you notice that you? it's just time and time again, here's the part of the body that is uh, underdeveloped? Yeah, for sure. I mean, what Scott's saying is true. The, the, the lives that most people live that we see are at a desk, at a computer, or on their phone. So all of the forward hunching, mm. um, tight hips, deactivated glutes, backside of the body, um, cause a lot of low back pain, not because people's low backs are weak or injured, just because they're not properly aligned, right? They're just constantly in that seated position. Um, so I see that too. I see the same thing. Um, the, the, the feet turned out is common. Everybody's got bunions these days because they're trying to jam their feet into shoes that are pointed for their whole life, right? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> Je Jessica's got the nice shoes. Yeah. That'd be but me. her advantage is she lifts heavy weights and she probably doesn't do that in those. So her toes get to spread out again. A lot of people don't have that. Um, so yeah, I, th I think if I had to point to one area of the body that was chronically imperfect in the in the people I see that we have to fix, it would be the hips though. It's tight hip flexors, it's low back positioning, mm. um, and we want to use that, that mechanism. That's the most powerful joint in the body to be able to hinge and be able to squat. Like that's what you're born to do. Um, what he's talking about 5,000 years ago, people didn't have chairs. They just sat on their heels, right? In terms of fixing the hips, how do you do that? I mean, is there, I guess there's multiple ways, but is there kind of a concept associated with it? I mean, the general concept is you gotta deactivate what's overactive first. So that's massage or, or, or foam rolling. You're gonna be your quads and your hip flexors. And then you have to stretch them out, lengthen them, right? You said first as in like prior to a workout? Is that what you mean by first? I mean like step one of three. Okay. So step one, all one, two, three, all done before a workout ideally. You deactivate it, you lengthen it, step number two, right, stretching. And then step number three would be to activate the antagonist muscle, which would be the glutes, hamstrings, okay. and low back. So, so work out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Or, and yeah, do a couple primers and then use them, right? Mm -hmm. Train those muscles to be used again. And then you hope that over time, a consistent practice of doing that and doing it well, the body will start to hold that position, right? It's the difference between going into a chiropractor and just getting things adjusted and not doing anything different. And so then they just go right back yeah, to where what they were. Pulled the spine out of place. Right. So that's all, yeah. I mean, that's that's what you try to do. What, um, about, what about stretching and lengthening after the workout? Love it. Oh, that's so, not a that's, that's not great. the wrong time to do it. No, no, that's great because you're already warmed up. You're probably gonna yeah. get a better, your body's gonna respond better. It's gonna accept the lengthening more once you've got blood profused everywhere. Um, so the harder part than knowing what to do with it is spotting it, right? You see, there's a lot of people, they, they're gonna do the work. Whatever, you're, whatever job you're asking your body to do, it's gonna do it. Like if I tell someone that's got no ankle flexibility to do a squat, they're gonna squat. It's just not gonna be like safe on, at every joint. So you have to be able to see it, be like, oh, their, their ankles aren't moving, therefore their hip is having to like hinge forward extremely you know, far forward to like keep their balance. That's a problem of the ankle. Let's see if we can address that by maybe elevating their ankle, their heel a little bit, getting them into a better position overall so that something else doesn't get hurt. And then yeah. people will come in and say, my back, I have a bad back because mm -hmm. my pain's in my back. And I'm like, you know, careful of that because you may have a brilliant back and it's communicating to you that something is off, yeah. whether it's glutes, inside, outside, abductors, adductors, so as. Dude, nine growing. times out of 10, a bad back is tight hips. Yeah, like, it almost always absolutely. Is. Well, in terms of helping the body to change, are there certain areas where you see tendencies that are um, maybe you weren't expecting to see or that are just chronic like they're talking about? 
I think everything Blair and both of them said is the same thing. It's always hips. Mm -hmm. Um, I see it a lot, especially because I am with women and we've carried babies and you know, they, a lot of times, like I see a client coming back in and they, they, they're, you know, six, eight, 10 years into childhood with their kids and they haven't really done a lot for their body. And so they're coming back and they're trying to reverse all of that pre-pregnancy right so um a lot of hip and lower back and it's just you know i use a lot of like we do free squat like freestanding squats but a lot of times i'll start them where it's guided because they just don't one have the form or the strength or the confidence um a lot of things that i do notice is confidence and their ability for their body to show up for them when we're doing something oh i don't know if i can do that well we can modify everything but let's see where your body's at with that and so that's one thing at Winks, you might have somebody that's getting ready to step on stage at a pro level that's training and they're gonna be hitting their weights a little bit differently. Um, you know, their plan might be to be building and then you might have somebody in the same class that's just doing higher repetitions, d- don't wanna get bulky. You know, mm-hmm. girls have this thing about not wanting to get bulky and they think weights is what's gonna get them there. But, um, oh, they okay, let me dive into that. They think that weights will make them bulky so they shy away from weights? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times people are like, I don't wanna lift weights, you know, I don't wanna get bulky. And I'm like, well, I mean, that's, I don't even know where that came from. Do you guys know where that came from? Like uh, that, I don't even know how that like got implemented and put into the brain on uh, how weights yeah, make because, us bulky. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger lifted a lot of weights and he was really bulky. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I mean, Arnold. as a woman, it's Arnold. Yeah. yeah. And it happened in what, six months? Yeah, he did, did it yeah, like yeah. in a week. Yeah. Yeah. It took him, exactly. He lifted one weight and got that big. So. You know, put it in perspective <laughs> though, like for women, I'm like, when I step on stage, my my weight on the scale doesn't really change, but my body looks different. I get tighter. I'm obviously dropping my water weight, but um, you know, it takes at the pro level. I get one opportunity a year to step on the stage because that's how hard it is to put that muscle on for one year of consistency. So if you think you're going to bulk up in one year of lifting 12 pound weights, like I don't, I I just don't understand where they're getting their information. You know, I think that's where social media you know, like booty bands and stuff like that, they look really good on those girls with nice butts on social media, but that's not how they got the butt, Yeah. you know? So, uh, yeah. I, yeah. A fit body cannot be bought, right? It yeah. takes work. And that's the thing I think about uh, a lot of people, not this group, but there's sort of this uh, need to be able to appreciate delayed gratification because it's hard and the results don't happen as fast as it did for Arnold, for most of us, and I mean, how do you help bring that, I guess, expectation Mm -hmm. to your students so that, this is gonna take time, ladies. So I don't take any clients if they're not committed for at least 90 days. Mm -hmm. I've learned that. Like when I first started my business, I would take anybody. And then, you know, I also thought that Built, you know, weight training and nutrition were one and the same, but those are two separate businesses as well. So I used to do it all in house with one client. Now I'm very clear that those are two separate things because I can't monitor what they're eating when they're not with me, but I can help them when they are with me with their training. And so I've I've learned to separate that. And then two, it's like you know you can do the body scans and all those things. Um, I always first start with them. I think you know Melissa. She works the strategic planner for Plaster County. She's yeah, been in oh on yeah, your okay. Yes. So she came to me and she was like, you know, I need to get back into the gym. And I'm like, hey, listen, this is like 90 days is kind of your body trusting you. This is like, it's not just showing up and doing your workout. It's your sleep, it's your water intake, it's your source of food, it's your stress level. I mean, there's so many different components to making a well-rounded life. And so there are even weeks where I'll be really good at hitting my workouts, but my sleep won't be good, my water intake wasn't good, my stuff stress levels crazy so I know that my body's not where it needs to be and it's reflected like that I'll have inflammation I'll have water retention and so it's really like you have to take time to break it down for them to understand like most people the world we live in today our bodies are an in inflammation period it's never resting cortisol levels are high and we see it and so and then food sources you know that i'm eating the organic food and i'm like unless you're actually getting your food from the farmer you have no idea what you're putting in your body like that doesn't mean anything in the grocery store and i think that's really important too because it took me a long time you know like i i'm supplement free like i don't want to put anything in my body which i've learned that i need to supplement my greens and stuff because no matter how much i'm putting in my mouth i'm still just not getting enough 
Mm-hmm. Well, well, kind of the subject of mindset has come up here and there throughout this conversation. And I, as, a, as a guy that coaches small business people, entrepreneurs, helps them to hopefully be at their very best, one of the things that I see as a big tendency, and I'm assuming that it exists as much in CrossFit and yoga and at Winks, is people overcommit to too many things, right? You've got so many things going on in your life that when you show up to the gym, you're not at your very best. You're rolling in last minute, you're discombobulated, and how are you gonna perform at your best when you have got too many other things in your life that you can't cut, you have not cut out? Is that a part of, uh, do, you have, do you help the audience or your, your students face that? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, I've done a lot of different types of fitness in my life and I, I think all of them work if, if people are compliant. And so like the number one reason for failure in any fitness program is non-compliance. People just stop showing up. Why do they stop? I mean, they're kids, it's too expensive, their work's too busy, someone dies, I mean, it doesn't matter. The, the fact is that if you want to have a body and a, a fitness practice that is there for you your entire life, it has to be a fundamental part of your life. It has to be your lifestyle. You just, it just is what you do, right? Um, and for people to get that concept and to really have it like buried in them is hard, right? Because it takes years and years and years. I mean, 90 days is a great start, right? I mean, that's, that's nice, but you know that they won't get what they wanted out of it for a lot longer than that. So the way I try to help them is I try to, like you said, simplify it. Don't have them try to eat the entire pizza at once. Um, we try to get people to make fitness a habit first. Mm -hmm. So we, at the beginning of the year, we offer, we do this thing called the New Year 66, where if they come Monday through Friday for 66 days, they get a free month at the gym, right? Wow. And we have like little, you know, watermarks along the way, 22 they get something, 44 they get something. That's just to incentivize people just to make it automatic, right? Make it part of their, I, dude, I'll tell you a great story. So there's a woman who is a friend of our family and she has been struggling with her, her journey, right? And so we're out at, at, a, at a birthday party at a, um, at a bar and she's like, Blair, this is not working for me, you know? She's like breaking down. I'm like, yo, here's what we'll do. Come to the gym every day in February, Monday through Friday. Give me your credit card at the beginning. If you make it every day, I won't charge you. If you, if you miss a day, I'm gonna charge it, right? Whoa. <laughs> so like, no, nah, don't, we don't do that. That's not like yeah. a normal but thing. Yeah, kind of a challenge. <laughs> no, but it was like this person felt like they needed that level of accountability. And like, you know, money is, is important yeah. to her and like she you know can't afford it. And that was like one of the issues, that was one of the obstacles. So we're just, we tried it, right? And here we are in February, she hasn't missed a day and she's been doing great, right? I'm not saying that she's cured or anything, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show the, that is a huge, um, obstacle for a lot of people. It's not that the the workouts aren't good. It's not that they're not effective anymore. People don't quit because things are ineffective. They quit because they're bored or they got out of their rhythm, yeah. right? That's that's what, what it comes down to. And what I hear in that experience is somebody else was now engaged. Blair was engaged in her experience. Mm -hmm. So Blair is like, if you keep coming, I won't charge you. You and I. Somebody cares. Somebody cares. Mm -hmm. And they're willing. And they're willing to show up. He's willing to show up for her beyond just me, business owner, you, customer. That's community. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing of all, if you ask me. I've been in business now for 19 years. This is our 19th year. 28,000 plus people have gone through our doors. So you would think I should have five studios and a 10 mile radius packing them in. No, because it's hard work. It's two hours out of your day and travel time and all that, it's a major commitment. So you have to be in that place where it's all about pain pleasure. You'll, get, you'll do more to avoid pain than you will to gain pleasure. Mm -hmm. So you have got to associate pain to not go into yoga, to not go into CrossFit, to not go into Wink. Wink or Winks? Winks, yeah. Winks, Winks, plural. You've got, it's gotta be that way. Otherwise, 
you've gone a whole lifetime of creating habits and those habits are like eating sugar. The floor in your digestive system is saying, okay, gimme, 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 gimme. You're gonna constantly want more sugar. Only until you deprive that of sugar that you no longer have that craving. It's the same thing with fitness. It's the same thing with anything that you want and wanna create in your life. Until you've created the habit of the pain pleasure relationship to it's now more painful for me not to show up mm -hmm. than it is to show up, you're, you're still gonna, you're gonna be in the fight. Yeah, you gotta reframe the addiction. Exactly. Yeah. I wanna make sure the audience knows that if you have a question, just raise your hand, I'll spot you back there. If you got a question, I'll, I'll let you guys jump in. Nothing? Kristen, nothing? You don't wanna grill, you wanna grill Scott on anything? <laughs> okay, um, Scott's been teaching me about breathing and that it would correct my ums if I work on it long enough. And I just ummed in front of Scott. Was, now whenever I talk to Scott, I um. But it, the way that we breathe is important for public speaking, for going on a two mile run. It's important to so many things. It's like, it's like medicine for us if we can get good at breathing. Scott, can you elaborate on where the breathing makes the impact for your students? What is at ease, what is at stress? So if you sit and you take a long breath and you take the inhale in, the life force, and you exhale it out in a long way, and I say give your breath a full life and a full exhale, give it a complete death. Surrender it. With that being said, there's an element of your body being at ease, okay? Where do people mostly live? Right here, from chest to face. That's where they're breathing. So now there's very little room. It's like hyperextending a knee. Once you've done that, the ligaments have very little elasticity for any over-exaggerated movement. So they're, they're, you, you, you're at risk. So most people come in breathing up here, and in any stressful situation, like an emotional situation, it's like we're crying. You don't have people cry and start opening up their chest and lifting their heart to the sky. No, they curl up in a fetal position and they hyperventilate. So if we had a life habit of taking long, deep breaths, expanded ribs, expanded spine breaths, then in the moment of stress and tension, we are much more likely to breathe through it rather than become it. You've heard the saying, to be or not to be, the Shakespeare. Well, how about to be and not to be it? To be real with what you're experiencing. I feel anger, I feel sadness, I feel emotion, and I'm not gonna become it. I'm not gonna you know, react anger to anger. And you really, it's hard to do that if you are taking long breaths and more at ease, moment to moment life habit. So being strong feels good, right? The more strong that we are feels good. And they, I've been reading that your strength, especially as you age, right? I talk about longevity being important to me, that really having muscular strength is a big piece of longevity so that you're strong enough to do things when you're 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, you gotta have strength. You gotta have the mobility, which we've touched on. You've gotta be able to breathe, but you need to continue to put on or continue to strengthen your muscles. And that's a big piece of what you two are working on, Blair and Jessica. Is that, a, there's another um there, Scott, that's for Scott. Just, <laughs> but in terms of building muscle, CrossFit does a lot of heavy weights. All right. And is that how you get stronger is heavy weights? Is that the way? I mean, fundamentally, yes, like you have to, you guys probably heard this before, but there's the uh, SAID principle, S-A-I-D. It's a specific adaptation to the imposed demand, right? So your body is will only adapt to what you ask it to do, is essentially what that means. So if you don't ask it to move heavy things, it's not gonna be good at moving heavy things. Put better, it's gonna be really good at moving the exact weight that you ask it to move. So Jess, I'm sure she, she progressively loads her clients to continue the adaptation, right? So. Mark, if you do the same weights every day at the gym, your body's gonna be really good at, say, pressing that weight. And then you put five more pounds on it, after you've been doing that for 10 years, it's gonna feel like a lot more, 
you're not gonna get stronger doing the same thing. So progressive overload is part of improving strength. Um, CrossFit doesn't really practice that in an organized way, right? We don't, we're more about very variation so that we, we stimulate the muscles by changing the way they're being used uh, rather than just increasing the load. Um, but back to your original question, yeah, you gotta lift heavy if you wanna build muscle. And I think the, the women, because I, I get that complaint too, that, that don't wanna get bulky, that only lasts until they're a certain age. And then everybody wants to be bulky. Right. Everybody we need, we wants need bone to yeah. right? We need bone density, right? right? Putting weights on your body and putting the muscle on there yeah. helps us live longer. I mean, I say bulky, but what I mean is people want muscle. People want mm. muscle because that makes their metabolism faster, they don't hold on to body fat as much, they're more durable, they can do more things. Muscle is awesome. And it just takes people a little bit of time to realize how awesome it is and how hard it is to get. And the fact that people are scared of it early on is just, I think, like you said, it's just an experience and they don't realize that what they're seeing on stage is literally the tip of an iceberg. Mm -hmm. Like they don't see the thousands of reps and hours and pounds that it took to get there. Um, but yeah, CrossFit has a different way of building muscle. It's much less, it's much less effective than like a traditional bodybuilding program because it's not the only goal. Um, but if the program is done well and it's well-rounded enough, there's enough weight training in a week to keep you building muscle. Do you think you'd add to that or no, I think you nailed it. I mean, yeah. and, and too, it's just like you said, it's there's so many different ways to find when your community, what works well for your body and you know what you look forward to doing too. Like, so I, I've never done CrossFit and I, I've done yoga a couple times and just listening to you guys, I, it's always a reminder to me to step out of what I do because it is fun to go try out different things. I live in the world that I've created, you know, so I'm kind of in my own little bubble doing my own little thing, but I take things like similarly and you know, these girls are sprinting outside, they're carrying heavy balls around the block, like, and I watch right when I see where they're at, you know, it is about, for me, for them, because I know them, you get to know your community, you know the things they're walking through in their life, um, you know the hard seasons, COVID being one of them. Like, I just made the workouts really freaking hard because I needed them to have a breakthrough in that time, that hour that they were with me because they probably weren't gonna get it outside of that time with me. And they were walking through, and a lot of them don't know how to deal with their stuff, right? They don't know how to sit in their frustrations or their anger or their sadness. And so I think Winks, a little bit more of what I give them are those life tools on, hey, you know, you're choosing to partner with anger right now or sadness or that hard thing that you're going through instead of letting your body literally release it through your weight, through your reps, through this community. And so we always end like that, our sessions actually with, I'll speak it out, I'll say, tell me one thing that you love about yourself. And week over week, there's it's crying because these people aren't going into other you know communities, their environments or their home, which makes me sad, where they're able to really speak into their body about how much that they are loved. That's why the community is so wow. important. Wow, so that, that happens at, at the end of class? What, I, ha what oh, happens, yeah. you, you, the, how big is a class? Um, so I do small group personal training sessions and the most that will be in like a class is 12. Uh, on the regular, eight to 12 in a, in a session. But I do it with my one-on-ones too. And yeah, I'll, you know, sometimes I'll feel like the Lord will move in me where um, life has just been taken from them. Like they're just not being fed well in the home, at work. You can tell when someone's drained. I can see it in the spirit. And so instead of having somebody in the session where I'll have them stand in a group and I'll say, hey, speak into each other. And not all the time they don't know each other. It's not hard to look at somebody and compliment them. But what's interesting is when you have them speak into themselves, it takes them a minute. And that's where I'll kind of pause and say, you know, if I asked you to tell me 10 things you didn't like about yourself, you would just, you know, shoot them out at me. But the fact that I'm asking you to name one thing that you love about me, not only do I say, they have to put it in an I am me statement. I am a wonderful mom. And I always tell them even more specifically is the, what is the one thing you feel like you're not doing well right now? You're beating yourself up. I want you to speak into that specific area. Do you think that that vulnerability that they're showing l lends itself better to women than, than uh, a cross section of men and women? 
Yeah, I think I can make men uncomfortable by my conversations because <laughs> I like to go to a, like, mm, I don't know about that, you know? Um, but I do, so I do train men at one-on-one, but it's interesting because in those sessions, they will go there with me. It takes a minute, but they'll go there. They get more more vulnerable, which makes me sad that they, they you know, men don't have a place that they maybe really do that. Um, women, they now see that this is like a lifeline, and so a lot of times, I'll explain like you might have the gold nugget through wisdom or something that you're walking through that a lot of times we'll just do it quietly because it's unrelatable or there's shame wrapped around it or guilt or judgment. We're like that literally might be the gold nugget for the person standing right next to you. So why don't you just give that away? And so I, you know, I think through, especially if you've been with me for a while through weight training, like that's what the Lord gave me to reach people. And so the when I recognized that is when my business, like it was an aha moment for me. Like this is the vessel for me. Weights are the vessel to reach people and um, I get to lead them into living a better, holier and healthier lifestyle through it. Okay, I can't believe there's no audience questions yet. These people love fitness. You love these people. What question, Jean, yes. I'll save you, I'll ask you a question. No, no, me? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so can you speak to the difference between lifting weights and using your body weight as the resistance for building muscle? Great question. You want, You really wanna know for me? Uh, what the, could you repeat the question again? Yeah, I'm sorry. So speak to the difference between you know CrossFit and, and, and what Jessica's doing is really centered around lifting weights to build the body mass. Yeah. What well, Scott does is more um, your body weight is the resistance that builds the muscles. And what's the what are the dynamics between the two processes, and how do they how do they work for themselves, and how does one work maybe better than the other or different? I'll give the layman uh, answer since you hit me with it. Uh, I like the combination of CrossFit and yoga because of the cardio piece. There is a lot of body weight stuff at CrossFit, which is I'm. I gravitate toward that because I can't lift heavy weights like some of these big dudes. But I, I think the combination is really good for building flexibility, building cardio, and then also <laughs> you know maintaining some strength. Yeah, but I'll I'll go first and you can you can fix fix what I say. <laughs> um, so when you're uh, when you're using your muscles, there's a couple different types of muscle contractions, right? So you have the a concentric contraction is what we think about lifting a weight typically. An eccentric contraction is when you are um, resisting a weight or lowering it, like again, with the force of gravity. And then there's an isometric contraction is where you're holding a position. Um, yoga tends to f- live more in the isometric realm, right? And that's really hard. There's a high time under tension. So the ability to build strength or um, isometric strength is developed it's, and it's really, really great. You, you take someone in CrossFit, and we can't, we don't do, they don't do that very well because <laughs> we don't spend that much time in one position, right? It's a different type of strength. Um, but probably if you go to the yoga studio and ask them to go do like a heavy deadlift to pick up a rock, like their muscles aren't quite as prepared for that either because that doesn't happen as often. So I think it's a different kind of strength. Both are very valid. I think that to build muscle, typically the uh, concentric and eccentric contractions are more suited to that because they actually attack the the cross section of the fiber more. Um, but I think what what Scott gets at with through the isometric holds is there's a lot of um, um, what do I say internal dialogue and there's like this I, f- I forget what we're calling it nowadays but like people press pause in their life and they actually have to think you don't got to think much in CrossFit. That's, I think a lot of people like that. They just kind of go in there and they shut their brains off, but you go to yoga and you know, that's, not, that's not an option. Very true. And yeah. some classes more than others. Like, for, I'm a posture freak, so from, from foot to forehead, I'm all about detail. Because to me, that's how we bring ourselves back to center. If we look at how we walk and how we sit and all these things that we do in our body, we don't do them in balance, so we come to yoga to, to rebalance. He's, he's being a little bit more scientific than I do. I look at there's push strength, there's pull strength, there's stabilization strength, there's isometric strength. So how do you go back to what I said earlier, what life do you live? How do you use your body? So again, if you're, you know, I, I, 
I'm a day trader and I go day trade at six in the morning at a local bakery. And then there's a group of guys, these CrossFit guys come in there and they're all dirty and they're talking about what they did. And this is six o'clock in the morning and they're all crazy and, and, and we've been starting to interact. And it's so fun to hear these guys talk about these hills that they went down and these burpees and these routines that they take each other through. Well, they're having a blast. Their spirit is moved. So to me, whatever it is that moves your spirit, whatever it is that you feel great doing, and you go when you're in doubt or you have uh, weakness of you know thought, weakness of mind, weakness of action, and you're in community, and these people that you go hike with and go horseback riding with and go camping with, these communities, they pull you back, they pull you back in, say, where have you been, come back, mm -hmm. and that, in regards to the whole kinds of strength, what do you use your body for? You know, if you're backpacking a lot, I don't want a whole bunch of weight. <laughs> I want a longevity, I wanna be able to walk 15 miles, I wanna be able to carry 40 pounds, but I need to have muscle to do that. So how do you use your body, how do you live your life, what brings you joy, what moves your spirit, and what does your community do? Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Jill. First of all, um, I was wondering for you, what do you love most about, like, you have, like, more of a, right? I call it, like, a harder core yoga, whereas some are more gentle. What would you say that you love more about that? In terms of my class or my studio? And the question, just so it's in the audience, too, what do you, what does she like more about the uh, hard, harder core yoga, right, That using that term? So my studio doesn't have a studio style. So a lot of studios, you can have an Iyengar studio or a Bikram studio or an Ashtanga studio. My studio doesn't have that. We have a bunch of teachers that teach their style, their version of a static class or their version of a flow class or a restorative class. So you could have, and just in the word flow, you could have a fast flow, which can be very cardio intensive. There are teachers that teach not really any posture but it's about getting the whole room to breathe together, to move together, and to kind of push that cardiovascular edge. In other classes like mine, it's about posture, it's about aligning the body, and then opening up the breath in that place. You know, two minutes of standing bow in a heated room on one leg, that gets your heart pumping. So that can be intense, and it's intense in a different way than what we're used to because we're not moving. Standing bow, for the, that's something I cannot do very well. But it's where you hold your leg up behind you and arch your back and stick one hand up in the air and stand on one foot. So, so it's length with strength. Yeah, so, it's hard. Yeah, and, it, and it, so it, gets the, it, it requires multitask the body. That's what I talk about. Multitask the body. Multi, multitask your abdominals. Have your abdominals support an extended leg and a contracted upper body and get your abdominals to multitask. Because in the event of, you know, you're, you know let's say an accident, a, a, a mountain bike accident. I was talking to a student yesterday. In the moment your body goes through all those contortions, it's not linear, it's not front to back, it's every angle that you could possibly imagine. So the more ways you can move the body, the better, and then there's different ways of speeding it up or slowing it down and adding a different intensity, and then the heat alone makes it intense yeah. as well. Any other questions? Scott. For uh, Blair, so when you graduated Princeton and you did your Rhodes Scholar thing, when did you decide you were gonna go into CrossFit as a business or a career versus what you graduated with? Well, I graduated with a history degree. So <laughs> I think that's a pretty A to B, yeah. like to open a gym. Um, well, so yes, I, I really didn't come out of college knowing I wanted to be a business owner or in fitness at all. Um, it happens a little bit by chance. I was living in Washington, D.C., and I was making ends meet and I was personal training and there was a CrossFit gym that, it was a CrossFit group that moonlighted at the gym that I was training at and I was familiar with it. I had done CrossFit when I was in, in college as like a training program. So when I, when I met this group, I recognized what they were doing. I, to be totally honest, I was not very impressed with what they were doing. I thought they were 
uh, making a big show of it and like ripping off their shirts and making all kinds of noise. And I'm like, Sounds familiar, uh, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was looking at him I'm like, Scott the audience. Y'all, this is just fitness. You don't need to be so dramatic about it, right? <laughs> Uh, but they had, they were, this was in 2008. And so they, they were talking about going out to California to go to the CrossFit games and it had just started. And so I was like, well, that sounds interesting. Cause I, I know what this is. I've done it in the past. I was pretty good at it. Um, and so the following year I, I went through the qualifiers and I, I qualified for the CrossFit games in 2009. And when I went out to California and I was around all these other people, I was like, oh, this is what it is. It's not just the the dramatics in the gym, it's like this whole kind of scientific approach to challenging the body and all the different energy systems and really being all encompassing and trying to like put as much together as you can. So when I did that, I, I, I that's what I wanted to do for my training personally at that point. I was only 25 years old or something at that point, 26 years old. Um, but then when I traveled around, I got to visit, I was in Europe for a year and I tr got to do, I went to all these different CrossFit gyms and I saw how they did it and it was all over all over Europe. And so that gave me kind of like the inspiration to come back and open my own gym and try to take the momentum that I had gained by being at the CrossFit games and turn it into something that was mine. Um, but all those experiences led to that and all that experience, the, the the exposure I had to those different types of coaches and programs and even facilities, um, you know, that's that's what really made me want to do it. And now you have an M and A strategy. You're buying up companies. <laughs> that is yeah. taking it to another level, baby. Yeah. Well, just uh, just answer on the phone. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, for Jess, uh, I, I've been around you for a while now. I know all the things you have happening outside of weeks and with your family. How do you keep that balance? Mm. How does she, how does Jess keep life balance? Well, family first, you know, I've learned that. I actually was more in a corporate space um, where I worked and was training on the side with Winx, um, but I was training out of other facilities. And when I got pregnant, I just wanted to be, and I still like being a mom is so important to me, and so I wanted to create a space to have my son with me. So he was literally raised in the gym with me, you know? I'd take naps in the gym in between clients with him. I had a breast pump in there so I could breastfeed him for as long as I could. Um, he was with me all the way until he started kindergarten. So I think once you know your values, like what you as a person stand for, then you're able to build your companies around your values. And, you know, I don't wanna look back ever. I mean, I look at Kaysen all the time and it's, he's like, every day I'm like in awe of how big he's getting. I don't wanna miss the moments. I have a daughter that's 25 that I had younger and I feel like I missed a lot of moments because I was so in the hustle. And there's this term of, you know, hustle, hustle, hustle in order to be successful. But there's, I, I don't know, I think now it's, you know, finding peace in your day is very successful. I've learned to term or to label things differently in my mind on what success looks like. And um, having a happy, um, happy children at home is pretty successful in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, only a minute or so left, so I'll end with like a final question. Scott, you brought up the word community. It's come up over and over. We got a great community as our studio audience. How would you describe your community, Scott? How would I describe our community? Well, within the studio community itself, or just the studio itself, there are so many interests. Like, for example, I'll say Kirtan. There's a group of people that do the sound healings, and now they collect towards themselves and create these drum circles, and there's a group of us that hike, and throughout our, since really 2020, we've been going out on these hikes. We've done some crazy hikes and people come and go and have these experiences of backpacking, sailing, horseback riding, hammocking, cold weather stuff. We do, do, do so much stuff. It's really a collection of people that are in support of each other that no matter what we're doing, there's somebody out there that you can refer back to or re reach out to and say, take me along. And our community is, is so amazing in terms of how they make space for each other in the room when the room is packed. Uh, it, there's just so many tentacles to our community and how they affect each other's lives. I, I just That alone is my quality of life, is to see how that unfolds and to be a part of that. Same question to you, Blair. 
your community. B- before I answer, what is yeah. hammocking? Hammocking. <laughs> that is a good question. Is that one person or two? Or three? One person. One person. <laughs> Cold weather, 10 degrees, sleeping in a hammock on the top of Donner Summit in, the, in, a, in a storm. Okay. It'd be, Kristen, it'd be, Kristen, it'd be more it? comfortable with a second uh, uh, set of body Just heat there. Any, <laughs> any, any part of that. So, so we backpack. We have a group that goes out and we backpack for days at a time. And we did that a lot last year. Don was there. Kristen was there. And I sleep in a hammock. I'm a, I've done the Tahoe Rim twice. I slept in a hammock. I'm a, I'm a huge hammocker. Okay. That's hammocking. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. I didn't know either. I yeah. love that. Uh, all right. If I had to describe our community... I think our community, I, I've, I've said this before to to, to other um, CrossFit gym owners, we have a, a culture of participation that I'm really proud of. Um, so the CrossFit community at large is, is pretty connected um, from, from regions and gyms and people follow each other online and you know it's all, out, it's all out there. But our community is really good at showing up for stuff. And I think what Scott said is true as well. There's people that have expertise or passions that they kind of bring other people along. Uh, but the thing I'm proudest of is that they they continue to show up, uh, not in the gym, but out extracurriculars, like at, at competitions, at people's birthday parties, at, you know, we do lots of goofy dress up stuff at the gym, which you're gonna be totally privy to over the next <laughs> years. Um, I look forward to it. Yeah, but Scott, people- Scott, I look forward to seeing you dress up. Yeah. <laughs> They just continue to show up, and I think that's that's not an accident because I've been to a lot of other gyms, like I said, and it's not there. So there's something that we are putting in to the membership that they they, they know it's okay to do that, that they can kind of be a little silly and they can uh, put themselves out there. I mean, one of the things that's terrifying for people is to be a center stage, right? To have the spotlight on you, whether it's competing or um, whether it's just anything. So. I love that the majority of the, the community is supported in in their ability to do that, and they just they keep showing up. So um, it's definitely an engaged group, which is great. That's cool, Jessica. Um, I would say culture at at Winx Fitness is the same, very engaged. Like we know what's going on in each other's lives, and I think that's so important. I think there's even more of a higher value after coming out of the last couple of years where it's important to know where people are at in their stuff and showing up outside of the sessions. Like, if you don't show up in your session, you're getting a text message for sure. Like, you know, by the end of the hour, like, where were you? Um, But to know, like, if they don't show up a couple days in a row, it's kind of like a red flag. And, you know, you have multiple people checking on you. And there's so much so that that community was such a big thing at Winx Fitness that the Sisterhood Collective was born out of that. I felt like the Lord one day was like, take these gym floor conversations to a stage so it can reach more people. Because we were having these, you get to that intimate space and you're able to have these transparent conversations. And I was watching the impact, not just on the client, but on the client's families and on the client's workspace that I was like, wow, when you can really change something inside someone, it changes the atmosphere that they walk into. And so that community has now been birthed into the Sisterhood Collective where we'll actually take really raw and hard conversations about all the things you can think of. And I'll find people are highlighted just through my community, like someone like you, Mark, that I've known for a long time. I'd be like, oh, Mark would be good for that topic. And we put them on a panel and it's like you're at, in my living room at home and we just kind of go around and talk about it. Those kind of things have really um, amplified within Winks, and you know the girls get together all the time, and I'm not even invited half the time, you know. And I love that. I there's no jealousy in that, right? Like I just love seeing the connection and seeing that they care about each other. And we've walked through, and I'm sure you guys can say it too. Like I've, I, I feel like I've witnessed everything. I've, I've seen death. I've seen uh, relationships dissolve. I've seen children die. I've, you walk through these things with people, and you get to sit with them in their darkness. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to go to that space with somebody. Yeah. Well, one of the markisms that we use around here for entrepreneurs is that nobody builds a truly great company alone. And I'm rallying the leaders of Sacramento around the most promising startups to build the most connected community in the world for local entrepreneurs. But I see what you are doing within your own communities. And I'm inspired by that. I'm learning from that. So I wanna thank you for not only sharing your knowledge and wisdom about fitness and health, but really 
your wisdom for, I don't know, bringing people together for a great reason. So thank you all for being on the show and thank you to the audience too. Appreciate it very much. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. So, thank, thank you. you. Yes, Mark. All right, let's give him a hand. <laughs> You've got a healthy mind and you've got a healthy body. That means that you've got a healthy business, hopefully, and ultimately a healthy life. If we don't have our health, we don't have anything. And uh, I really enjoyed today's show. And I think one of the things I enjoyed most was the community that came together to support these fitness gurus. And it was really cool to see the community, the communities come together. After the show, I'm on a group text with Blair, Jessica, and Scott, and we're talking about going on a uh, a group hike hiking trip where you're you're getting people to think collaboratively about community building instead of competitively. So collaboration over competitiveness wins when you're building a community. So. For all of you out there fighting the good fight for your health and for all of you out there fighting the good fight for our freedom, our security, and our way of life, and to all of you out there fighting the good fight for entrepreneurship. Here at the Growth Factory, here in the Mark Haney Show, here at Haney Biz, we're never above you, never below you, always by your side. Thanks for watching today's show. My goal for every episode is that you find a takeaway, something tangible you can use in your business today. And if you have a comment about a favorite takeaway, feel free to put it in the in the box below. And if you have a, a topic that you'd like me to bring up on the show, don't forget to let me know. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn more about entrepreneurship. Because at Haney Biz, we are always by your side.